Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Tom Fitton of Judicial Watch joins the program live now. I know that there is some r real heavy reporting on fast food prices going up, uh, but this dollar menu Trump crime situation is be beyond my capacity to understand it. Tom, <laughs> please, please help me. So like figure out how they can select like the McChicken and the McDouble and then six nuggets and Trump's guilty. How, how does this menu of guilt work? What, what the hell is going on? I don't know. Uh, as, as, as Jesse's pointed out and virtually every lawyer who's looked at it, of course, I'm looking at it as head of judicial watch. I'm not a lawyer, but I've seen enough of this, uh, to know what doesn't make sense. And I, I took the time to read the jury instructions. They're available on the court's website. And uh, it's, it's a rigged set of instructions. It's designed to get the jury to the result of a guilty verdict. Now, the only good news from reading those jury instructions is that because they're making up the law as they go along and there's no good faith basis uh, to uh, accuse them of any of the crimes listed. Certainly there was no evidence behind it. And and the logic doesn't fit in the sense that, you know, which crime is at issue when and how does it fit in with the underlying issue of messing with documents, none of which has been shown, not even let alone proven. Uh, it's so confusing. I could imagine a juror or two or three say, I, 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 I'm not doing this. This is, doesn't make any sense, and I'm not signing on to this. So, you know, that's the kind of the slim read I think Trump was probably hoping for, that uh, it's so obviously convoluted and confusing that there's going to be a juror who says, well, you know, if I don't understand it, and they're supposed to make it so I do understand it, maybe there's something wrong here, and I'm not going to sign on to this rush to judgment uh, by Judge Merchant, who's, who who uh, is demonstrate who demonstrates his anti-Trump bias in the way these instructions have been written and conveyed to the jury, and throughout the trial, I just think the, oh, well, the yes, <laughs> of the trial has just been alarming. Letting the government go last, not not allowing any objections, letting the government have the final say is everything has been flipped, and the uh, the, the clear-eyed. Uh, optimist, uh, 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 assuming that the American justice system is innocent until proven guilty, this seems to be the exact opposite. No, and in my view, uh, the fact that the jury is even considering these charges is, is like a, an indictment of the justice system and Judge Merchant's process. Because in the ordinary course, after six weeks of a prosecution about nothing, a, a judge should have looked at the paucity of evidence and said, Oh, well, there's nothing here to justify any any guilty verdict. So I'm going to direct a verdict and tell the jury or direct a verdict, however one does that under New York law, uh, to acquit President Trump. But instead, he's denied requests for mistrials. And not only is he not directing a verdict for acquittal, he's written the jury instructions in a way to almost ensure a conviction. And uh, so... Uh, it's the, as I've been noting, it's the worst miscarriage of justice I've ever seen in American history, uh, certainly in terms of uh, a political prosecution like this. And, and as far as I'm concerned, Robert De Niro may as well be running this trial. I mean, everyone was kind of laughing and joking about his ridiculous performance. And, you know, that's politics, right? But if it were just politics, I'd be like, oh, yeah, it's just politics. Who cares? But it's that approach that's informing Judge Merchant and and Alvin Bragg throw out all this garbage about President Trump and hopes and just hope the jury gets confused into thinking the garbage is an indication and evidence of a crime when in fact it's not. Trump is an innocent man. Not only is he innocent, he didn't do anything wrong in terms of misconduct as alleged here. It's not even like, oh, well, well, that's distasteful, but it's legal. No, what he had a non-disclosure agreement with folks who might say bad things about him. Nothing unusual about that. And he paid his lawyer for legal expenses. This is the thing that 
this is the bee in my bonnet and the thorn in my paw that I can't get my head around because I've done 15 years in the corporate press. And the the idea that Donald Trump's guilty of trying to kill a bad story about him. Like, what what the hell is wrong? What universe do you live in? What, what powerful per back to the times of Noah? What powerful person doesn't want to stop bad information from them coming out? This is the most common practice in human history, actually, and is totally legal and permissible under the First Amendment, obviously. And th this is just politics as it, as it is. And, and Hillary Clinton with the Russian dossier was just her own version of this, yet no prosecution. No, I mean, I have to go back to the beginning of the Clinton campaigns for his presidency, where James Carville and George Stephanopoulos were out there uh, suppressing so-called bimbo eruptions, smearing the women who were raising questions about what Bill Clinton was up to in terms of, of affairs and assault and such. And then um, more recently, you had those 51 intel advisors, intelligence officials, deep staters, signing on to that fake letter about Hunter's laptop, trying to suppress that story coordinated by the Trump campaign and Trump um, uh, allies, um, excuse me, the Biden campaign. Yeah. Uh, was that was that a, a reportable dis, uh, uh, expenditure under the Federal Elections Commission? If, if Trump is convicted, all bets are off in terms of prosecutions for all politicians who try to manipulate the media and don't report it on their FEC forms. All sorts of local prosecutors can now begin but of course, you know, that's not going to be the case, right, Benny? I mean, we say, well, if this happens, just think of what's going to happen to Democrats and Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden and Barack Obama. Nothing's going to happen to them if yeah. the past is any prologue. And so this is why I think Trump should commit. And I would be I would be public about it, you know, because I'm judicial watcher. I say, you know, just tell people what you plan to do. He should, if he wins the presidency or the next honest president, um, directly hire a special counsel to investigate this abuse of him, this collusion, this conspiracy to violate his civil rights and the civil rights of countless of other Americans under the color of law. Yeah. So to that point, it just it, talking about collusion, the true collusion here, this daughter of Judge Mershon, and you don't have to be particularly high IQ. I, I went to community college, but I, I, I'm alive and I notice things. I'm a noticer. <laughs> And I'm noticing that she's making hundreds of millions of dollars from Democrats. And that's not normally how political fundraising works. Some like 20 year old who has no history in doing that doesn't suddenly get like the pl biggest plum contracts for political fundraising from Democrats, particularly Democrats like Adam Schiff who are investigating Donald Trump. And this seems like uh, something that has been really orchestrated and uh, like kind of a mosaic that's been stitched together to get to this judge and to incentivize this judge to do everything possible, knowing that they would need to, they would, this would be one of the cases they'd need to bring against Trump along with this judge also has Steve Bannon and Navarro and every, everybody, every big case that's brought in New York somehow goes to this judge. Uh, right. this right. seems like they bought the guy off, but that's just what I'm noticing. This seems like they buy the, the Per, their person. Yeah, I, you know, I just think he's a democratic activist. He's a politician um, in in judicial robes. He's made donations to the Biden campaign, uh, extreme left uh, campaign organizations that are anti-Trump and pro-Democrat. And of course, there's nothing wrong with the Biden campaign getting donations from anyone, uh, but judges. And he violated the rules, and he's been dinged by the Judicial Commission. It's been confirmed in the last week or so. It's leaked out. Of course, he hasn't released the letter. He's the only one who can disclose it, uh, saying that that dismissed the complaint against him with a caution, meaning there was a finding based on my understanding of the rules that he did what he was accused of doing, but they just gave him a slap on the wrist. He won't even release that letter. So we have a confirmation he wasn't punished. And frankly, um, the way the rules work in, in, in New York is if you break the rules, even with a letter of caution, you know, next time around, that cannon will be used against you. So he broke the rules again, I think, repeatedly in the trial, most notably in his eruption and his breakdown over Mr. Costello's testimony, screaming, clear the courtroom, throwing in media out, acting in a way 
that's not in accordance with the judicial canons where judges, you know, Benny, you can start yelling and screaming. I can start yelling and screaming. But if I'm a judge on the bench, I'd be breaking the rules because decorum is required of judges. And you can be forceful and you can enforce the rules. Uh, but to lose it is a breakdown and is, a, is, is an ethical lapse by him. And this is on top of, you know, his demonstrated bias against Trump as evidenced by these donations and all these awful rulings, which are more legal questions. So the man's bias is well documented. His family using this trial to make a lot of money is well documented. Uh, but what we're seeing now in these jury instructions is what seems to us, once again, just just people with a pulse, right? Uh, observing <laughs> things and noticing things seems blatantly unconstitutional. Here, uh, knowing that Judicial Watch has argued before the Supreme Court and you filed with the Supreme Court, you know the Supreme Court better than any, potentially, uh, you know, any any person in Washington, uh, maybe you can sound off on this. Here's the ruling that everybody's talking about this morning, Louisiana versus Ramos. And it in this ruling, they talk about unanimity in juries and how and what happens when there's a hung jury and what the what the stakes actually are and nobody this has been established law from the supreme court yet uh, mershon seems to be defying the supreme court by saying there doesn't need to be unanimity you can just choose you can you can choose the mcchicken mcdouble or the chicken nuggets and uh, i'll just mash them all together right and everybody gets diabetes yeah, I mean, the, the dispute is, do they need to have uh, have a unanimous conclusion about what law allegedly he was trying to violate in messing with the records? Avoiding the issue of whether he messed with the records is there's no evidence he did so. There's, a, you know, you're, that's where you're kind of in this undiscovered territory and not something that the our public and our legal system is used to that it effectively leads to, and if it does lead to this, then it's unconstitutional, as you point out, in my view. One juror can decide that he violated a rule, a law. The other 11 jurors can think he violated another rule. In the ordinary course, that disagreement, that, um, that, that uh, would lead to a, a, a hung jury. So one juror, in effect, can convict Trump, and that's not the way our system is supposed to work. But you, uh, I, you just can't. You don't have separate legal decisions or jury verdicts on separate crimes, and and not not only is not a majority required, you don't even need more than one juror, in effect. Can you? Can you? I, I know we're tight on time, but can you please just like unpack that, like? So, so, so you don't need more than one juror. T typically, the way that this has always been framed, and the way that you know the I iconography of the courtroom is, there's one holdout, right? There's one guy that says uh, that this person's not guilty, and then there's entire Hollywood movies, right, about the twelve angry men. But uh, so you're saying that this is in, this is in reverse for the Trump trial. Yeah, I mean, typically. You know, they're pretend the left is pretending. Well, this is just like a burglary. You, you know, you you're just. You just have to be caught going into a house illegally for other illegal purposes. And you don't need to say what those illegal purposes are. But this isn't the same law. The law is contingent on a disclosure and, frankly, a full explanation as to what law he was trying to violate uh, through this alleged manipulation of records. And the court has said there doesn't have to be a unanimous decision on what that law is. And they went through, he went through the 444 analysis that you have four jurors believe this was the law he was trying to violate. This is the law and this is the law. Well, it doesn't have to be 444. It could be one versus 11 or two versus 10. So uh, it, it doesn't make any sense. And one of the laws is, and this is what really struck me reading the jury instructions is that there's a law that they can find him violating, um, which is messing with business records. So he's be they're being asked to find whether he messed with business records in order to violate a law to mess with business records. That's Alice in Wonderland. And I'm not, and frankly, 
I'm charitably describing the, the absurdity of the process there. So on appeal, just really quickly here, uh, <laughs> on appeal, what's going to happen here? Well, the question and is how quick it's going to go. I mean, if he if he's convicted, I, I, I look, Benny, I don't know what's going to happen if he's convicted. I mean, if, if you're a de defendant, the last thing you want to hear from your lawyer is, oh, don't worry if you're found guilty, we'll appeal. But what happens to you in the meantime? Yeah. Is he going to be taken into custody? Is house, he going to be we, jailed? We think I house don't know. Arrest, yeah, house arrest with the gag to prevent Who him. Who knows? House, house arrest in New York with the gag to prevent him from campaigning, right? You know, and 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 Merchant's taken over our presidential campaign. He's already yes. gagged the campaign. He's gagged Trump, the candidate. And he's effectively running our presidential election by suppressing the ability of the number one candidate, former president, to go out there. And, and he did it through illicit means, meaning allowing charges that he knew should never have been allowed to go forward, to go forward, and further trying to rig the trial in the various ways that have been explained by you and so many others. Anyone just, what's interesting about this, Benny, and you, you kind of watch the liberal media more than I'm able to, is how few in the left media are defending this process. Hmm. The silence is deafening. I mean, you get your nut jobs out there that, you know, hate Trump and will say anything that is, uh, you know, that will, you know, don't care if he's drawn and quartered. Uh, but, you know, most of the normal liberal media uh, is kind of aghast at this, this process. And, you know, maybe the federal courts will intervene to try to undo this quickly so our campaigns um, can proceed. But I, I, my concern is that the campaign's already been compromised. Mm. I mean, he's been held hostage politically for six weeks. We've been held hostage, too. America has. Yes. And the question is, is that compromise of our campaign system, is it going to impact the final outcome in the election in the way that will undermine confidence in the outcome? So it's such a great point. It's such a dangerous moment. You'd have to just assume that we don't live in a republic anymore, right? And we live inside of a a, a, a power struggle with a fascistic uh, power, a power struggle with a fascistic entity that just will not relinquish power, and they just don't care. The place can burn over the ashes. We'll rule over the ashes. That's like tr it's a true definition of evil. Uh, Tom Fitton at Judicial Watch is somebody who actually does fight. Uh, he's a bulldog. Don't get into a fight with him. You know, as you can see here, he, he'll he'll knock you out. Um, but Tom Fitton is somebody who actually does legitimately uh, try and keep this country free and safe by working through ju the judicial systems at Judicial Watch. 2.6 million followers. Can't be wrong. Head over to X. Give him a follow uh, and make sure you support Judicial Watch. Thanks, Benny. Thanks, Tom.